What if I told you I can shrink anything I put behind this device? In this device, there are no electronics, lenses, or cameras in use. What you're seeing is a real-life, real-time image. If I take this disc, which you can clearly see is bigger than this window, but put it behind it, it suddenly fits inside. I have a wooden box here. It clearly can't fit inside this window, right? But watch this. <laughs> it shrinks. In fact, if I just stick my hand behind it, suddenly my hand shrinks. It looks like there's a tiny person stuck inside. Look how weird this looks. This device is called an optical taper, and it was created by a Harvard scientist who sent this one to me. In order to understand how this works, we need to start with this. It's a fiber optic cable. Notice how I can shine a laser light in one end and it comes out the other end. The reason this can happen is because once light is shined inside the fiber, it bounces on the edges of the glass with almost perfect reflection until it comes out the other end. This is called total internal reflection. It happens when you have any high refractive index material like glass next to a low refractive index material like air or plastic. When the light comes out the other end, it's just a bunch of jumbled mixed up light though. There's no ability to retain an image with one fiber. But when you have many fibers, that all changes. For example, this is a natural stone called Ulexite. Its nickname is TV stone or TV rock. It isn't just one big crystal, but it has a bunch of tiny straight fibers that run from one end of the rock to the other end. This makes an amazing effect. If you stick an image below it, you can see the image on top of the rock. The image is literally transferred to the top. It's not like glass where you're just seeing the image from below, but you're seeing the image as if it were like a screen on top of the rock. It looks so weird. This is happening because all of the tiny fibers are like millions of fiber optic cables. Each cable is like a pixel of light. But this is where you can do something interesting. What if instead of keeping the fibers a constant diameter, you made the outlet smaller than the inlet? Well, then you'd still have the image, but you'll have essentially packed all of the light coming into the fibers into a smaller space. You squish the light or shrink it down to a smaller area. Every glass fiber in here has been tapered down so that the outlet is about half the diameter of the inlet. So each fiber funnels the light down to a smaller area. The result of this is that on the small end, it shrinks anything that's put into the large end. This is so weird to see in person. So this is not a lens, but you can make things bigger or smaller, similar to how you can do with a lens, but without all the problems that lenses have. For example, lenses have focal points. So in order to see clearly, your eye has to be in just the right spot or else everything's blurry. They also distort the image near the edges. And since the lens is curved, you can get annoying reflections. And also to shrink things, typically those things have to be far away from the lens. So shrinking it just kind of makes it look further away, kind of like when you look through a telescope or binoculars backwards. So in my opinion, the shrinking is the coolest part about the taper, but that's actually not what these were made for. If you look at the other end, notice that everything is magnified. So it's made to make small print easier to read and it does it without distortion or focal points like a lens does. This is so cool to see a real-time image like this with no edge distortions as it enlarges or shrinks objects in real life. It looks kind of fake. It's like you're watching a screen. Now the ability to squish light into a smaller area might be making a lot of alarms go off in your head if you know something about the second law of thermodynamics and something called the conservation of etendu. The law of etendu is best said like this. You can't squish light without making it spread out more. What's cool is you can see the conservation of etendu really clearly here with this optical taper. So when I squish light, it makes it spread out more. So I'm squishing it here and now it's spread out more because I can still see the card at all angles here. Notice how I can still see the image on top of the taper even when I'm at these really shallow angles. But then when I spread the light out more, the light gets squished together. There's less of an angle. So I can't see the image unless I'm right above it. 
The result of this is if you start with a light source that's already spread to the maximum, then you can't ever use a mirror or a lens to make that light source brighter, meaning you can't squish it down anymore. For example, my white screen is a good example of a source of light that's sending light equally in all directions, a diffuse light source. So can I magnify the screen light to make it brighter? Well, I'll use this lens and a light meter app to measure if we can get it to appear brighter than I can measure right at the source. So aiming it at the screen, I get this number. But now I'll stick the lens in front of it and try to focus it right on the light meter. Okay, so it's, actually, so it's using this camera on my phone, so that's the one I'm gonna put the lens in front of. Put it in front of it, we get a lot less. But what about my optical taper? I mean, it's essentially taking all the light from this larger area and making it come out an area half the size. So let's check if it just doubles the irradiance. Nope, it doesn't. So somehow I'm getting less light coming through this smaller area. So why is that happening? Well, remember that the funneling of light is basically the same as taking perfectly reflecting mirrors and funneling light down to a smaller point. So let's look at this ray tracer and try to do just that. If I have a diffuse light source, meaning the light's flying out in a full 180 degrees, then you'll see that in trying to focus the light, I reflect in most of it back out the back of the mirrors. So with my optical taper, I'm squeezing more pixels into my light sensor area, but those pixels are each dimmer. So it turns out about the same brightness or even a little bit less. So in the end, I still can't make a source of light brighter even with an optical taper. Now, if you're far from the source of light so it doesn't take up your full frame of view, then you can make it appear brighter by using a lens or a taper, but it will never be brighter than the brightness directly on the surface of that light source. So we can magnify sunlight to be brighter than if you looked at the sun without the lens, but never brighter than it would be if you were on the surface of the sun. Now, whenever I talk about et and do, I always get people bringing up lasers, since laser light is collimated, and so its light rays are straight lines. So that means that all the light that comes into the light funnels can go through to a smaller area. Now, et and do still applies here because when you squish it to a smaller area, it actually ends up spreading it out more. But you can concentrate it to a higher irradiance, more power per area. And that's true for any non-diffuse light source, which is basically only lasers. You can use an optical taper to make the light coming out of the taper have more irradiance than the surface of the light source. But remember I said that you can't make it brighter. Brightness is not power per area or irradiance, it's power per area divided by the solid angle, called radiance. A solid angle is like a 3D version of a regular angle. It describes how wide something spreads out in space, and it's measured from the source, not the observer. So for example, if I go back to our ray tracing graphic here and I draw a detector that has the same solid angle as our original laser source here, you can see that it says 31. So 31 is the maximum radiance here. And no matter where I put it downstream, it's still a maximum of 31. So even down at the tip here where it's maximally concentrated, it's still a maximum of 31. So all of the light has a higher irradiance there, but the radiance is the same. Because you have all this wasted space where the light is not going in the same solid angle. We don't just make more light just because we squish it down. So we still can't break the laws of thermodynamics even with lasers. But hey, even with the laws we have to live by, optical tapers are still really cool and basically the closest thing I've seen to seeing something shrink in real life. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab, and we'll see you next time.